Oh. Okay. It's not going. What happened? <laughs> you shoved it in too far. Do you think this is how the professionals install pipe? We'll be right back after these messages. Oh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are putting in our heat source. Our little pot belly stove is going in. Got up this morning, it was 37 degrees. It's been about 37 degrees the past few days. We're cold, we're getting cold, you know. We're, we're from Phoenix. We're from Phoenix, yeah, we're not, <laughs> but we gotta adapt to this climate. We've gotta install this. And it's got to go right here. There's nowhere else to put this thing in this little trailer. And there's a window right behind it, which isn't good. If this gets enough heat, this could shatter. I, I know that. Luckily, it's not, the window's not set in. It's kind of, it's set out on the outside. So we've got to put a sheet of hardy board up on this wall here. We're going to put a one inch air gap between this wall and the hardy board so that airflow can get around that. It's a requirement to have that air gap. And of course, we have to have all of our clearances. We've got our paver stones already in here that we're going to put under the wood burning stove. We got to cut a hole in the roof. We got to get all the pipe in. I think I've got all the parts. Hopefully I don't have to go back into town for this project, but like every other project, I'm going to town like half a dozen times. So let's do it. I am back here at our lovely junk pile. Junk pile. Looking for, ah, here we go. Looking for some old pool fence railing. Not sure to call it that, but this stuff right here, pretty, uh, what is this, about three quarter of an inch, maybe one inch thick. I'm gonna use this stuff as my spacers for that hardy board that I got to put up behind the stove. And so this is the great thing about having a junk pile, you guys. It's not pretty to look at. I don't like seeing it when, neither, especially Natalie, we don't like seeing it when uh, we're flying the drone over and you know we're trying to focus on, oh look, there's the shed, there's the trailer, there's the solar. But then it's like, oh look, there's a big old junk pile. Someday it'll, it'll be a little cleaner. There's we got a project coming up that's going to use a lot of that that pallet wood. Uh, actually, going to use that for the trailer skirting. So it'll get it will get cleaned up eventually when we have time for that. Probably is when we'll we'll clean it up. But for now, I got to cut 31 inch spacers out of some of this old pole fencing from our old house where we demolished the old pull that was there. It was falling apart and it was a, a hazard. So here we go. Here's our spacers. Here's the rest of them. 35 spacers. There is a dog barking back here in a direction that I shouldn't really be able to hear any dogs this way. So I'm gonna hike back here and see what's going on. Looks like there's some cows out here. I don't know if that's a rancher's dog that was barking at him or the neighbor's dog that lives about three quarters of a mile from us but this is out on state land behind us 
I was worried it was a, gonna be another bobcat in a tree. Yeah, that looks like the neighbor's dogs, of course. They're out here harassing the cows. Pretty place for him to be munching down. There's our lake. Well, not our lake, but. Okay. Scared off those dogs. Those are the same dogs that treed that bobcat in. You guys saw one in one of our other videos. They just run around and harass everything they see. They've even, uh, <laughs> and I, I've met the neighbor over there. They've even uh, had a run-in with a porcupine. They got they got hit more than once from that porcupine. Their faces were just covered in quill, porcupine quill. Crazy dogs. Gotta hike back and get back to work. Supposed to be able to score this stuff with a knife and then just snap it off. Oh, there it goes. Aha! I win! I think if I were to do it again, I'd probably use a saw. I, I hope these screws can hold. This thing is heavy. really heavy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I guess we forgot this thing's not attached. <laughs> then I like hopped over to the kitchen. Yeah, kitchen. you moved pretty quick. <laughs> How long can you hold this for? Forever. Forever. It's gonna take a minute to put these on. <laughs> I'm getting tired of them. No screws in the middle because of the big window. So we got all our spacers on there and all of them down here. All right. Go ahead and push it. Push it against the wall. I lined them up where I believe the studs are, so it should work. Got our gap at the top up here. Okay, it's you know inch and a half. Got our gap down here at the bottom. Two by fours are holding it up, so inch and a half. Those will come out because they're combustible. I'm gonna put some little pieces of square tubing, I think, down here. Just in case this sheet decides to settle a little. I mean, it's it's suspended out from the wall, so I am a little bit worried about it. Here's the gap. So we are an inch, if not a tad more, off of the wall. There's even more space between the hardy board and the, the window in here because it's recessed out i guess you could say there we go we got our fire barrier ready one two three oh. i don't care feels like it's got it over here hold on not all the way back oh. no oh. scoot forward scoot forward 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 hello forward all the way i'm forwarder than you <laughs> oh there's another one <laughs> yeah <laughs> Eagle eye. You went too far forward. Got the stove in place. Here's the next part. So this stove has an oval opening, which is really annoying. I looked everywhere to find an adapter for this opening to go from what it is to a round six inch pipe. Pretty sure they don't make them anymore. If they do, let me know. Actually, I'm curious. 
let me step back a little bit. I know they have some adapters, but they don't have the one for this size. Seven one, inches one way, three and three quarters the other way. I found some for different sizes, but not for ours. So I found a little trick. And uh, it involves an eight inch stove pipe cap. What we're gonna do is put this here, right on, right on top of that. I'm gonna go underneath in the stove and trace on it, and then I'm gonna cut it out, cut out an opening, the shape of this. And so this will then sit right over that, and then I've got an eight to six inch adapter here that will go and slide right in there and six inches out all the way up. You will see. All right, there it is. We gotta cut that out. Okay, go ahead. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Now we lock it, and then you gotta push really hard on it. Push down real hard. Push, push, push. Okay, let's see if it helps. Ooh, good job, it helps. See, look. They're like scissors of the metal. All right, I think I got it. Had to make it a little bit bigger. It goes on nice and tight. Made it a little long, there we go. And we'll go right there. That's on there really good. Yeah. I think I like it. I do like it. Now, of course, some of your concerns might be buildup of creosote right in here, right? What I've learned about creosote, maybe I'm wrong because I'm we're new to kinda, this. I'm, I'm new to this. Creosote forms mostly on the cooler part of your stove pipes. This is going to be really hot, so I don't think it'd ever build up. Maybe ash would build up in here, so. It shouldn't be too hard to clean out, you know, maybe come in from right here and get a shop back to clean this out. So, you know, when you do your stove pipe cleaning. Right. There's the start of something. You want to get down? Huh? Is that a yes? All right, I'm going to grab you. Oh, I got you. Oh. So hold this. I'm gonna pull up. Oh, okay. Ready? Yeah. Did, the, did it come off? Yeah. Oh man. You gotta put your muscles into it. Maybe if I like grab these edges. Yeah, I can. It's too hard. Okay, you you pull up on that. I can. <laughs> Here, maybe if I like here, hug it. See if that works better. Yep. Much stronger now. You ready? I'm gonna, I'm gonna jerk oh. it. Okay. I think it's really in there. Uh, yeah. Ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. Came off, didn't it? Uh, possibly. You you pull. Oh, oh, oh. It's not really making it fun to. <laughs> Trade rolls? There's not really anything to grab on. I know, right? <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I go.
What happened? <laughs> you shoved it in too far. Please excuse us while we figure this out. We'll be right back after these messages. After these, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> guys will know. This is my trap that there's two peanut butter spots and two can go up. <laughs> um, there they just got to crawl up there, up here. One comes from here. If one, that one goes over here. Wait. <laughs> They're definitely dead. This is a trap for the mice. Nice. What I just, you, I just got it. What did you just do? I, uh, I, I held it between my legs, like, like this, <laughs> and, then, and then I just pulled up. Like, oh. I just squeezed it with my, my hulking thighs. <laughs> you know, see? <laughs> see that? Oh, yeah, <sighs> look at you. Except that's probably too much now. That's amazing. <laughs> I got big quads. My question though is like, how do we get it over this and then down in yeah, without squishing it back down? We'll have to squish it back down and then I'll have, have to do my leg thing while I'm up there. <laughs> that I will record. I want to to walk. Bear hug that thing. Yeah. Uh, come on, bear hug it. I got it. If I can hold this with my legs and pull it apart, you could bear it. <sighs> Why is it seem so much harder? All right, get out of the way. <laughs> hold this. I don't know if I can do this. But I don't know either. It looks sketchy. I'm going to try it. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. <laughs> Do you think this is how the professionals install pipe? I'm sure they do whatever they gotta do. <laughs> you know? Okay. I'll keep an eye on it. It stopped. Oh, there it goes. I got it. See? Why does that seem so easy? I don't know. But two of us can't pull this apart. <laughs> I don't know. This makes zero sense. Making me look foolish, honey. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I've got the marking for my pipe. I marked it in the wrong spot the first time, but I got it right now because I noticed there's looks like a piece of framing here and a framing member here. So we're right in the middle. Should work out good. One thing I should say is this is our first rodeo with the uh, wood burning stove. Yeah. So far, so good. Not too bad. A little nervous. I don't know. All we really have to do now, all we have to do, we got to take this big, heavy pot belly stove outside and put the first fire in it. Instructions say the tiny amount of instructions that we have. Oh, say yeah, where are they? I wanted to show That we it. should do a just a small fire. And I've heard this many times before. You want to put your stove outside and do its first burn in out there because it will smell up your house. Right? Here's our instructions. We don't know how old this stove is. Yeah. But that's it's never been used, and this is what it came with. So, right. We bought it off Craigslist. From someone in down in the valley, Phoenix area, that only used it as a decoration. It was like a, yeah, it was just there in their house. The guy we bought it from, it was his dad's, I think, oh, right? I believe so. That sounds right. Yeah. And then he passed it down. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it's pretty much a brand new stove. It was like, well, what yeah. was it? 300 bucks is what Something we paid for? There. Yeah. <laughs> might, might be from the 90s. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. All right, let's get it outside. It's gonna be heavy. Yes. Go. Yep.
Yeah, we're going on a little adventure today. Oh, and I think just found a fall color. Pinkly. kids are enjoying the fall colors. Yeah, that one's a pretty one. <laughs> oh, they like that food, huh? 